Hi, I'm Mark Geary, and I'm the host of You Think That's Funny, a podcast. You can say that question either in an accusatory way or as a question. If you want to catch up with what we're discussing in this week's podcast, go to youthinkthatsfunnypodcast.com and you will find the links to the funny things that we are discussing or things relating to the funny things we're discussing. On this week's show, which is the first filmed show we're doing, so look at, uh, for all those that were craving the look of a a fat, balding, middle-aged man, you finally know what I look like. But luckily, we have, it's a very special edition this week. Um, We have kicked out the middle age, and we have a young person, a real live young person on this week's podcast, if you can believe such a thing. Um, Hopefully, she's going to look up up from whatever uh, Twitter feed is going on right now and give us uh, her best views. It is the staggeringly enthusiastic and positive Christian Borky, who is a uh, artist and a graduate of DePaul University. Welcome, Christian. Hello, it's so nice to be here. It's someone who's Gen Z. Can you believe? Yeah, it's, it's a, a podcast. Yeah, a, 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 a Gen Z are on a podcast. I never thought I'd see that day that we would tempt them into this realm. But never welcome, that Christian. You crawl this far into your life. Yeah. <laughs> Well, anyway, I, I have mentioned that you are a uh, a young person. Uh, my other disclosure is that I've known uh, Christian for about a couple of years now, and I've worked with Christian as a producer and a performer, and her enthusiasm is infectious, is what I would say. Um, so, again, welcome, Christian, to the world of uh, You Think That's Funny. I'm so fucking excited to be here. I'm a fan of the podcast. So oh, wow. It's, you're the one who's listening. I every every Monday I look for the stats and I was like, one person's listening. How can I get to that person? And it's you. So you're gonna have to listen to your own podcast now, otherwise there'll be zero listens. So you anyway. know, I am self indulgent and narcissistic enough to absolutely <laughs> listen to myself on a podcast. Excellent. <laughs> Great. We'll keep our one listener for this week then. Only joking, there are millions of you out there. Anyway, let's get to what you think is funny, which is why you're here, Christian. So, the first one, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna set it up, and then you can talk about it. Now, we don't want to get um, too specific here, right? Otherwise, um, you're gonna get in trouble. Um, your first thing that you find endlessly funny is co-workers oversharing heinous amounts of personal info over work email so give me first of all set the the stage like give me give me some of the best give me the goss give me the best stuff first let me set the stage first and foremost and say i've worked here at my new company doing logistics um for a month and a month do, in and you're yeah, already a month in and I know frankly a nefarious <laughs> amount of information about people who I've never met before. They're all virtual. They just live in a box on my yeah. screen. And they are just so open with me because I literally will just ask a question or just be like, ha ha. And then they decide, oh, let me tell you about my fight with my wife today. <laughs> or like, let me tell you about my stepson who I hate. <laughs> Whoa. And this, and so, it's like this is a work email that you're sending this yeah. to. So theoretically, some IT guy can maybe read this. Um, and honestly, since my name is Christian, right? Not a lot of people, and I'm fully virtual. Not a lot of people even know that I'm a woman. They just know that I'm someone behind a screen. Um, mm. And since they know so little about me, they I don't know why they assume I'm a man and just trust this man with so many secrets. Um, <laughs> But I think it is the funniest thing in the world. I have so much gossip on people who I've never met before and will probably never meet in my life. Am I going to stay at this job for long? Who knows? <laughs> wow. And, and these, so this is a, is this like a, a young company, an older company? I mean, what's Very the deal? Very old. A, a, dare I say a Chicago staple. Okay. No, no, but I mean, are the people working there, are they on the younger oh, side? Oh, the... so old. Double my age, at least. Oh, so they're just, you know what it is, they're just desperate for someone to connect to, (laughs) and you're, you're like, connectable. Okay, now I can explain it. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, it it is, it's funny to me, like, 
so here's something that happened to me uh, that is similar to, to your thing. Right? So we were going to a wedding one time, me and, me and my better half, and uh, I was complaining to her. I was like, God, I hate weddings. Everyone's just so, you know, like, oh, how, what's the weather like where you are, blah, blah, blah. You know, just that boring stuff and i was like yeah and i was like god weddings are just like this antenna for boring small talk i wish that it wasn't that way and you know i wouldn't hate going to weddings and and this is on the way to a wedding we go to a wedding and wouldn't you know so we're talking to this uh older gentleman and he's giving us the full skinny on his sex life and just yes. like hitting like stuff that it's like and and afterwards i said you know what be careful what you wish for because i was like <laughs> can we please go back to the weather i do not want to know what's going on in the sexual life of a 67 year old man that like, is where you and i differ i would love to know the sexual intimacy of a 67 year old man and i uh, want him to tell me <laughs> through his work you know with his company name in it because <laughs> that is exactly what i'm getting Oh, man. See, I, I, my whole life I was like, yeah, I'm cool. I just want to relate. And then I was like, nope, I, I definitely don't. Let's all stay at arm's length, please. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not even like, so you have, you're not even, so let's get back to the nitty gritty of this. So you're not even like a face to these people at this point, right? No. You're just a and name. Dare I say, I'm not even a gender, the correct one to these people. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. And I truly don't know what I do other than like ask one question or just be like oh thank yeah. you sometimes I say thank you bestie uh, uh, ironically um uh, which I think maybe tips them off a little bit but uh, I can't help it um that bestie is the key that is opening the floodgates I it has feel like so many floodgates yeah. and I'm like you all are just like coordinating trucks to go places <laughs> Is this, you must have a friend circle outside of this. Surely this cannot be the only social interaction you get today. Um, but lo and behold, I know a lot about, um, they also love telling me how much they love the LGBTQ. Yeah. That's my favorite thing. Cause sometimes, cause some of them like kind of know um, uh, that I'm a gay. Yeah. <laughs> so they take it as like a springboard to tell me like their opinions, their gay experiences. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, and these are truckers. These are not truckers proper. They're the people who oh. coordinate the truckers. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Because I was like, um, uh, trucking, truckers' sexual experience is definitely a black hole that we do not want to go down. Oh, my Lord. Certainly not. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but the lady who types in a keyboard, literally, I think anyone could do this job. It's literally just typing numbers into a thing all day. Mm. But I guess it gets lonely. Mm. <laughs> lonely at the top. Of the keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> Top line of the keyboard. All right. Well, um, actually, I did it. So I'll, I'll, my show aims to be a little bit scientific. So I actually did some research to this. Um, so let me tell you why people overshare. I looked into this. Now, uh, psychology today, which is, is that like the psychology equivalent of USA Today or something where it's like, okay, this is like the one that we leave outside the hotel room. Psychology Today said there were five reasons for people oversharing. There was a false sense of intimacy where people actually feel they're closer than they are, just, just, which I don't feel like that's what you're getting, right? Unless I mean, Bestie really is the key to yeah, these that people's be, souls. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's solace in a stranger. Now that one I'm seeing like, oh my God, I haven't okay, left the house in three two. weeks. <laughs> this is, so solace in a stranger, I think, is, is where we're registering, right? Um, a misguided attempt to fast track a relationship. Scary. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's just leave that one hanging and carry on, right? Poor boundaries obviously that that one's in and then so here was here was the interesting one to me because maybe you can dish on whether this happened right so it, it's an attempt to elicit sympathy and therefore get the dirt on other people so hey i showed you my hand you show me mine are you getting are you getting asked well you know are you getting any leading questions no no 
know, nor do I offer that information myself. I'm not like, oh man, like I had a bad day. Like yeah. I had a fight with the old ball and chain. Like I don't <laughs> say that to people. And yet yeah. they're like, let me detail why, you know, my wife and I disagree on like iPad usage for our children, which isn't like that funny of gossip, but it's like, I, I'm dying to know because I don't really know you. Yeah. I think I um, have the opposite of like why I overshare. It's like why I love people sharing with me. And I love when strangers overshare with me. It is oh. solace in a stranger, but it's both ways. Oh, so no. Like, You've opened the floodgates. I don't know you, and I don't know anything about you, but keep fishing. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that that was, uh, to me, that was so interesting that you brought that one up as a funny, because that one has not come up. Oh, here was a comment by Psychology Today as well. Some people may overshare due to narcissistic, narcissistic, tendencies or because they feel inadequate and have something to prove which is like both that's like the far ends of the same line isn't it anyway mm -hmm. many don't realize they are oversharing and struggle to read the audience so there Ooh. you go that was that was psychology today's take on it well, let's go to number two. This one will be a fasty. So you um, people listening online, um, you need to go to the links page for this one. Um, let me, it, Christian, you can describe it. Um, I got a question. It's the why link. Mm -hmm. So please describe and tell us why it's funny. Here is the thing. <laughs> It, there's a musical. The musical is called Jesus Christ Superstar. And Jesus, spoiler alert for those who have not seen it or read the book, um, Jesus dies in it. And he, yeah, he has a really big crisis on like, why should he die? Um, in it, the first man who originated this role, it's a fucking musical, by the way. Didn't know if I said that. Uh, the man who originated the role hits a G5 uh, when he sings Why? Um, and since then, every actor who's played the role has tried to hit that same role. And the video link is a supercut of a bunch of actors playing Jesus Christ and Lin Manuel Miranda, who I think is so fucking funny, <laughs> um, trying to hit the note as well. Some of them successfully, some of them not. The video is just titled "Why" in all caps. It is like a minute long. It's not a minute. It's a little more than a minute. But yeah. um, seeing all of them together trying to hit that note, um, it evokes something guttural, something primal inside of me. <laughs> yeah. Listening to them screeching, hollering, um, while like <clears throat> like an eighties sort of like rock thing is going on in the background. Yeah. Um, to me, Christianity inherently funny. Um men acting funny. <laughs> <laughs> um Everything about it, I think, is just the perfect video. And yeah. it's punctuated, spoiler alert for the video, by Lynn Noel Miranda, the most successful man in the video, yeah. um, in a freshman year production of it that's set during the Holocaust for some reason, which is not what the musical is set. Yeah. Uh, not hitting the note even a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, he was like, he's the, the star of the piece, right? He's the one where you're like, okay, that's the guy I know. There's like, I think there's like a Turkish version. I couldn't place the the uh the the accent but there was a couple of foreign versions thrown mm -hmm. in there right i, I but i couldn't mm -hmm. get what they were so so you have a musical background i've seen you music away there christian so is there any sort of mu obviously not hitting the note is something my old tin ears wouldn't even recognize um but so that so that's part of the piece then is just like everyone missing it or something it's not only everyone missing it it's when men try to do like this falsetto thing and you can tell yeah. when they're like it's not properly sung yeah um and i'm not like a proper singer at all but you can tell when they're like instead of singing it properly like <laughs> <laughs> like trying their best to get up there trying to rub um, it plant it yeah there's nothing better than uh effort earnest effort yeah. during this like really emotional part of the song yeah um that's all super cut together for my enjoyment and it, it's I don't have to even go to the musical. I get to just watch it online, you know? Awesome. Actually, that reminds me of, so do you remember the band that Greta Van Fleet that everyone hated for 15 minutes? Cause it was like so exactly like Led Zeppelin. Oh, okay. 
making sense to me. Okay, so there was this band, Greta Van Fleet. They kind of got big. Everyone hated them. Everyone was like, oh, my God, he's just trying to sound like Robert Plant, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, I we uh, the Lincoln Lodge actually uh, does a thing where we go and host the stages of a, of a street festival called Ribfest. And uh, I met Greta Van Fleet at that when they were just no one, right? And I walk in the tent, and they are the four prettiest men you've ever seen oh my god they were oh my so god did pretty. you bang any of them did not i was just like why not because here's the thing i walk in and i'm like oh my god these guys are just rock stars i hate them immediately and i was like <laughs> what a bunch of posers but they were the nicest lads ever they thought it was going to be awesome to be introduced by someone with a british accent and they were like pri normally that you walk into the tent and the bands are like use this twat you know what i mean and then they're like and you're like i want to introduce you as this you know you're coming out on tour blah 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 and they could give a crap they're just like where's the heroin you know like sure. <laughs> and and so but these were the nicest lads ever and they they thought it was great that they were going to be introduced by a british guy and they're like will he say this will he say that and blah 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 so they sort of won me over and i the the lead singer was so pretty it made you want to puke like and he's got like this <laughs> flouncy blousy shirt on and ringlet hair and everything and Did i you but weep at this man's beauty this is I, you're painting me such a word picture i'm gonna cry yeah and, and so i was like i was like they won me over a little bit but i was still in the back of my mind like bunch of poses like bunch of poses mm -hmm. And I walk back to the to the sound booth where I like introduce them from because I never go on the stage, and um, me and the sound guy are looking at each other like, "Have you seen the band?" Yeah, right, you know. And they come out on stage and they start up with this like mega rock song, and the guy opens his mouth to sing, and it's exactly Robert Plant, and you could almost hear the sound of everyone's jaw like hitting the pavement. Like, oh my God, this guy is effing amazing. Like, and it was, but that to me, like when I was watching the Y thing, I was just remembering like this singer who I had just written off as like pretty boy wannabe rock star, mm -hmm. F his noise or whatever. And then my jaw hit in the floor. And that this was the first time I'd ever even heard of him. And then yeah, uh, two months later, they've got like, you know, the song is getting played on the radio and everyone is just hating them and i'm going around going well, actually they're nice lads and they deserve this an apologist success. for them. yes <laughs> for a led zeppelin uh, tribute band anyway that sounds like it was an awakening for you <laughs> it, it was like i've never looked at a dude and gone man that's I've, I've seen dudes where i'm like you know val kilmer i knew i was like okay not now val kilmer but when he was the ice man and all that i was like okay <laughs> This is a very good looking dude. Uh, but this was like a jaw dropping thing to me to see to see these <laughs> these guys and be like, man, you are so pretty. But anyway, I, I've totally derailed us from the why thing. So I had another question for you. God, I've done it again. We're gonna go over. Anyway, sorry, Chris. I was curious. I was asking you even more questions <laughs> yeah. about it because I wanted to know. Greta Van Fleet, everybody, not a bunch of posers, worthwhile musicians. Anyway. If that doesn't get me cancelled, nothing will. So, um, so you're young. We've acknowledged this this fact. You are a mm -hmm. young. Um, the video editing and creation of video as an art form obviously has like rocketed recently. Mm -hmm. And like, as a as a young like you are. Do you find yourself like looking at video and just being like, okay, video is just is like a tool now that is it's not just you film people, but you can just smack do all these cuts and do everything and everyone's doing these amazing things and all that. Like, are you one of these people that's like totally obsessed with YouTube and going in like, oh, here's the latest hot clip and you know, what are they I doing? I really try to limit but the time that I'm spending on my phone, especially like in the pandemic, uh, not completely obsessed. Hmm. However, uh, I, it doesn't work. I'm still completely obsessed. Um, as I think as a young, I have a more, uh, I don't know if it's like a natural understanding because I grew up with it more, but like hmm. understanding of how to use the form better than just like filming people and using all these cuts and edits. Hmm. Um, unfortunately, the internet is populated by children mostly. 
And so I feel very uncomfortable, like watching children be good at video editing. Um, and so, that's why I can't spend more than five minutes on TikTok because I'm like watching a 13 year old um, <laughs> do just some sort of mortifyingly personal thing online that is incredibly well edited. Um, I just don't feel comfortable interacting with that. Cause it's like, if I like it, then they see that it was me. And I don't want that, <laughs> you know? So you're um, already feeling your age in your 20s oh my god there is no hope for any of us anymore <laughs> I know, it's, it's not like a feeling my age it's like that's a minor online who's already so good at the thing that they do but uh, they're also nine oh, you know okay, like yeah. if i was nine and like adults were interacting with the content i was putting online i don't know what that would do to my psyche and i don't want to have someone find that out <laughs> oh, okay a, a word of warning. All right. So let's get on to number three. I'm going to describe this one. I was a little bit confused by this one, okay. to be honest. So you're going to have to explain it out. You said, when I watch bootlegs and the bootlegger is loudly enjoying the content. So being an old, I was immediately thinking bootlegs like, you know, cassette tapes of a bootleg of a concert. But you're presumably meaning bootlegs of like films? Yeah, filmed bootlegs or boot, uh, bootlegs of theater. Um, I watch them constantly, and there's nothing better than when somebody is illegally recording something, but they like like it so much that they include their own voice in it, being like, "Oh, holy shit, this is awesome!" Because <laughs> um, it's like it's, it's such a sweet experience yeah. to experience anything with somebody else, especially because I you know feel so fucking isolated right now. Yeah. Um, I watch these bootlegs of like films or you know theater back when that was a thing. Um, rest in peace, I guess. Yeah. Um, there's one of like the musical Hades Town where the stage splits and there's some lady sitting next to the bootlegger who is doing it illegal. Yeah. Um, who's <laughs> just like super loudly enjoying the show and is kind of rooting the bootleg but making it so much better for me. And I bootleg almost everything I go to. Um, <laughs> and I am one of those people who does that. Um, I've leaked, I've leaked a couple of my own bootlegs online. Um, Whoa. some of them are like very rare things which i i would love to give you the gossip on after this because i'm scared that people are gonna find me online um but like the original recording of uh hamilton i saw the original cast of that recorded myself and i'm in like half of it because i'm just being like <laughs> whoa this is awesome this is a world i didn't even know existed being so old so like where are you how are these things getting passed around I, no i'd heard about bootlegging in the cinema and i always thought but it costs ten dollars to go to the cinema. Why are we doing this in the cinema? Film festivals, film festivals uh, of like rare content that's only at that film festival. You have to like get on a plane to go to. Um, uh, or in the case of the theater, if you like couldn't make it to Broadway or whatever. Um, uh, the art of doing it that I found is I'll take my phone, wear something black, um, position the phone like on myself, and just like enjoy the show. Like I have yeah. both hands free if it's just like laying in my chest. Um, and you can find it online by going on YouTube. If you type in like any musical and then like slime tutorial, that's what a lot of them are called. Um, you'll just like find bootlegs of stuff. Huh. I, it's, it must be hard because you could almost build that into a thing, right? You know how everything's a thing now. Like, oh, I, all my stuff, I put it on TikTok as this or whatever, but <laughs> it's totally illegal. So if you ever got famous for it, you would be like immediately arrested, which is, but then, you, you know, it's kind of like, I guess it's like, um, mis so I assume, you know, mystery si science theater is, yes. is, was that your like entree into this is like, well, this is a official bootlegging or no. Um, you've just made it the dessert. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was not my entrance into it. My entrance was just that like, I have a compulsive need to relive the moments that I've already lived. Yeah. Um, and I, it's also kind of thrilling because Circling back to Lumo Miranda, I'm sorry that I've talked about him so much, but apparently he's notoriously good at spotting a bootlegger. And I was in the original cast of Hamilton, fourth row, bootlegging away, yeah. um, and it was thrilling that he didn't catch me. Oh, wow. <laughs> like, that's also part of the fun for me is like, ooh, I'm going to enjoy this later on my own, and he didn't catch me. <laughs> huh. Wow. I, the, yeah, it's a new world to I had a mate who used to uh, bootleg actual audio concerts, and mm -hmm. he once got you know, pulled by the bouncers and they were going to beat the crap out of the guy. And luckily they got the manager of the band and he had a re he'd, he'd done a remix 
of one of their songs and he had it on a CD and he's like, oh, I'll just record because I want to do, you know, a remix. And that yeah. got him, that saved him from the beating and he got to meet the band because he'd done this remix and stuff. So I, I, I was aware of audio, but man, bootlegging theater is something I didn't even know about. So, it is thrilling, and a lot of them don't get professionally recorded. Um, so hmm. you just like it's it exists, which is good. It's like what the theater is; it exists in one moment and then it's gone forever. But sometimes yeah. I want to see it. Cool. <laughs> and right. I like the ones where clearly the bootlegger wasn't in the way; like they clearly weren't going like this. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> like they they were being secret about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, well, let's get on to the next one then before the before the doors are kicked in by the secret police on my recording here. They're, they're, rec they're watching our every move. Um, okay, so I'm going to have to read this one out. Okay. In January 2020, Democratic Chicago alderman Walter Burnett said, I think about that movie about the two firemen where they were faking like they were gay to get benefits. That's a concern of mine. While he used that as an excuse to vote against a measure benefiting the LGBTQ businesses. Explain yourself. That man's a genius. The gorilla grip <laughs> that I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry's had on society um, <laughs> is incredible. Um, that I host a lot of trivia and stuff, and so I'm constantly like, looking up trivia facts. And so... I did a whole round on Adam Sandler. Obviously, that was going to be the first question. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> that is the funniest fucking thing. Heterosexuals, hilarious. Um, <laughs> Why, thank you. Of course. <laughs> and that trope is like, it's not really a trope. You can't really call it a trope of like two dudes getting married for the benefits. But it's happened enough times where it's like you could kind of think of it. Yeah. Like you could recall a couple of examples of like maybe content you've seen that has it. So to use that... Um, as a genuine politician uh, for nefarious purposes. So funny. I love that for Adam Sandler. I love that for the community. <laughs> um, I thought that was the funniest fucking thing that's ever happened. <laughs> Maybe it's something about the whole LGBTQ thing because I had a similar thing happen to me once where I, <laughs> the first job I had in America, the guy, I was working with this guy. A, he looked like um, Dabney Coleman, who is the evil boss in 9 to 5, uh -huh. to give that. So that was very off-putting to see Dabney Coleman every time I went to a project meeting. But he what, he took me aside and he, we were talking about the history of Britain. He goes, is it true that, I can't remember which Edward or George it was, once threw his homosex his son's homosexual lover off the top of a castle. And I was like, where did this question blah, blah, blah. And then it suddenly, it suddenly dawned on me. He was talking about a scene in Braveheart. <laughs> he actually thought, like, I mean, there's a whole, there's, there's a very anti-Braveheart sentiment from English people, obviously. Sure. Doesn't portray us very well. But the problem is they bled. The only issue I have with Braveheart is they messed with the facts and the fiction too much. And I'm like, mm -hmm. like, it's either fact or it's either fiction. Like, don't, you know, mess with it. You do not like but, historical fiction as a genre. But, yeah, but, but it was like... It just took me like 10 seconds. I'm like, A, why is he asking the question? And then B, the penny just suddenly drops. Like he's talking about a scene in Braveheart as historical fact. And the fact that you had to answer for for largely uh, an entire country. You had to answer yeah. for it. <laughs> yeah. So I, funny. I, I think I went, well, uh, times were different back then. And, you know, <laughs> um, we wouldn't do it now. Uh, but I just didn't want to break the magic that he felt with the film. So anyway, oh boy. So yeah, so we're talking about a genre of just people interpreting the movies as kind of real. It's that whole thing with the uh, you know onion. Is it the onion or was it the real news? Is definitely mm -hmm. a thing now, right? But but to actually use something you know to be fiction as a as a as a fact is is definitely. It's what is happening. Have you seen? This is going to be a young question to ask. Have you heard the new music video for Call Me By Your Name? Or have you seen the music video for Call Me By Your Name by Lil Nas X? Do any of those words make sense to you? Um, yeah, then words so, make sense, but the uh, the context is totally lost on me. So in 
this music video, uh, Lil Nas X is a gay, uh, gay guy, gets sent to hell, pole dances to hell, and he gives Satan a lap dance. Yeah. That's like the music video. That's what happens in it. Okay. And a lot of people are like, this is literally demonic. This is literally the devil. And it's like, it's a music video. The, yeah. Also, the devil isn't real. <laughs> like, and if it is, it's not Lil Nas X dressed up in CGI makeup. Yeah. Like, that, I it's guess that I guess they're always going to say that the music is demonic, right? I mean, it was like with the who was it? The heavy metal people. You remember those mm-hmm. guys? They were all demonic, right? So now it's oh, now now it's now it's hip hop people who are demonic. We have moved on, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. All right. Well, let's get to number five. Um, so we're back on the music. That's how we know we've got a young on the line. We're, we're very embedded in music. So explain. <laughs> Actually, we're talking about s- s- Satanic. I cannot think of the band Pentatonix as anything other than a heavy metal band from the 1970s because it's like, that's what the name means to me. But uh, explain your your uh, amusement with the band Pentatonix, please. So Pentatonix comes from the Pentatonix scale, meaning like mm-hmm. five, because it's an acapella band and there's five of them. They are five wildly different people. Like they're different mm-hmm. races, different genders, different marital status, different like everything but they write and sing songs like a creepy monolith. Mm -hmm. Um, Like two of them are gay men. One of them's a married woman who's straight. Um, Like two of them are single. Uh, There are all kinds of things. And so they write lyrics that are like just so weird and vague. They could, they could be talking about anyone, but not in a hot way, Mm. Um, which really culminates in this music video called coffee in bed. They're singing about bringing a potential partner coffee in bed when they're sad but they're all holding coffee in bed and it's like five different individual shots of them for the whole video, holding coffee in bed while singing about bringing it to somebody else. Hmm. Um, and they're all Christians too. I'm sorry for coming down to um. Christians today, uh, but it makes their music just kind of funnier <laughs> to me. Um, oh, I never knew but... they're Christian. I, I, I suspected they might be Christian just from like, yeah. I don't know what it was, like a cappella. I was like, oh, they, they probably think that the electricity comes from the devil or something, right? So. <laughs> they were on the sing-off. This is completely unrelated. I'm so sorry. But they were going to sing Usher's OMG on this, like, competition show. And the whole drama that week was that one of them didn't want them to say God. And so they replaced all the lyrics with gosh. And they sang, like, oh, oh my gosh, I'm so in love. Oh, my God. <laughs> Which is, oh my gosh. on so many levels. <laughs> Yeah, and then you said they dance kind of cr- in a Christian yeah, so they, way. Nobody plays an instrument in the band, so when they're like really getting to, to those breakdowns, it's just them like swaying yeah. to, to them going like doom 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 doom, <laughs> um, and it is just hysterical. And to be clear, I kind of like their music. It's like interesting, yeah. um, but they could not be a more ridiculous fucking group of people. And this is what they've chosen to do with their adult lives, and huh. I love that for them. Uh, is, is the acapella liking from your musical background again? Because i got to be honest with you. I always say there's there's three three versions of the song, right? There's the proper version, which is the best. There's the acoustic version, which is like, the oh, God, did they have to do it? And then there's mm-hmm. the acapella version, which is like, turn it off. I'm not interested in this whatsoever. Fair. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, like, they... They make all the sounds. Like the beatboxer is really good. He mm. is like he sounds really big. Yeah. Um, however, you are so right, and you are absolutely right to slam on them because <laughs> what a ridiculous thing that they do. <laughs> but a- a cappella has a thing in in American college life, right? Like I've seen mm-hmm. like all these colleges have a cappella bands. Like what's mm-hmm. that it's about? It's humiliating. It's humiliating as an audience member to sit there and watch them do it. Uh... Um, let alone be in one. <laughs> yeah. Huh. The, yeah. It's just, um, I mean, the only alternative, I, I really, uh, I did my research on Pentatonix because I'm a good host. And um, they do a lot of versions of things, right? That's the whole thing. Like, it's the version mm-hmm. of this. Um, but the only time I've ever liked versions of things is the, um, I'm, I'm big into, uh, um, like, lounge versions of things. so like there's a guy called richard cheese i don't know if you've ever heard of him but like he does 
um, lounge versions of like unlikely songs. And he, uh, <laughs> we were at a party once and I was like, let's put this Richard Cheese CD on it, be fun or whatever. And, and we're playing it. And he did a version of, um, I think it's Closer by oh, Nine okay, Inch Nails. And there was an oh. exact pause in the, in the party and Richard Cheese sings, I want to fuck you like an animal in a lounge style, like in a in a Frank Sinatra style in the exact pause in the party where everyone oh. stopped talking and this guy goes, I want to fuck you like an animal. And it's it, like, I was mortified because I was the one like, put this CD on, it's going to be great. <laughs> but anyway... <laughs> Anyway, so uh, we'll we'll park pentatonics at that. So, all right. So we got a uh, we got a last couple of questions here for you. I've gone over. Oh God, I'm gonna. It's gonna be a rough week. I'm gonna spend the entire week thinking what I did wrong again. But we've gone over, so let's just crash it anyway, right? So, do you have this is a, a new question for the thing? Do you have like an idea of where your humor, like what the genesis of it might be. Like, okay, what are these things that shaped me liking these things? Okay. The genesis of a lot of things in my life was in, so I went to Catholic school my entire life Mm -hmm. and I didn't know that other people didn't believe in God or thought that like, I just thought God was everywhere. And then in sixth grade, some kid told me that God isn't real. And that is what has changed my life for forever because um, I started like questioning my reality, started questioning the things that people around me uh, would say. Um, And it truly made me like somebody who thinks a lot about things. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that was the genesis of my humor, but that was definitely the genesis of like when I literally came into my own mind, you know, when you gain sentience Mm -hmm. kind of. (laughs) Yeah. Um, That's really when I like... I started putting pieces together and started finding things funny and started like expressing myself uh, in a funnier way. Yeah. Um, was uh, learning that God is fake. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. That's, I I was just expecting something like, Oh, I loved my grandma and she told me everything. But you come in with like a whole existential angle on it. I had existential crises like in the shower at church at my school because I had to go to church. Um, it really like it spun off some sort of like intellectual knob in my head. Yeah. Um, and it made me like just really think about every single thing. Yeah. And now that I think about every single thing, every fucking thing is funny. Huh. Um Cool. All right. But but, <laughs> but Christianity more more than anything, evidently, right? Yeah. Objectively so funny. Yeah. yeah. And you're and you like to say you are a musician, so that's probably gonna mean you see the fun in in the part of it that a lot of people just like ah oh, it's just music yeah mm-hmm. i'm guessing i'm second guessing you there i'll shut up all right so then let, there's the big closer question then the big closer question is um so how does how does this manifest right you're a performer how can how what are the little bits and pieces that you use in your everyday life of your sense of humor Max, I'm sorry to give you a serious answer. There's no bits or jokies. Um, But anything that maximizes the joy of myself and other people around me. um, Wow. I I never thought I'd hear a comedian say that one. Most of them, it's just like, oh, because I need satisfaction. (laughs) (laughs) But you're actually wanting other people to enjoy life. You are bizarre. I... (laughs) Unfortunately, when I perform, I'm like, oh, what will maximize everybody having fun and not just like be, you know, masturbatory in any way? Wow. (laughs) You're shocking me on this thing. So, yeah. So, I mean, is there any little places where you can like, oh, I can put a little bit of Christian into here? Um, That's kind of everywhere. That's in my work emails when I say, hello, bestie. That's in um, when I open the fridge. Mm -hmm. Uh, (laughs) The meals that I make for myself, (laughs) fucking jokes. Um, (laughs) You are the entire opposite of me. I gotta be honest. <laughs> I, I think I do that so well. Mm. Mm. All right, so, okay, so we got it. Oh, there was one more section. Sorry, sorry, there is one more section. So, I was, this is the one I'm most excited about, believe it or not. So, I sent you 
two clips. All right, so so in podcast land, you've got to go check the clips out. Otherwise, you're not going to know what we're about to discuss. I sent you two clips, two of my favorite sketches ever. And I was like, God, I really hope Christian likes these and then by extension may like me. So tell me honestly what you thought. The first one is Alexi Sale and the Noble Art of Verbal Abuse. Good or crap? Fucking hysterical. Because Yay. there's nothing I love more than a man getting the shit kicked out of him. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, that's not all I thought, about, thought was funny about it. But like the first time that he started getting the shit kicked out of him, I was like, oh, I'm in. I'm in for the ride. <laughs> so so we got a win there. Huge W. Yeah. The second one. Second uh, oh, one. sorry. You can introduce the second yes, one. Yes. So the second one is um, by a very good... Um, uh, late 90s i think it was a sketch show called smack the pony um which was uh, a big favorite of mine and their their highlight reel section is when they do the video dating um tapes um so what did you think of that one i loved it because it was so many women and i love anything with women in it um and i love that each was like an individual story and i thought all of them were so fucking funny um I forgot what it was like to watch a video that's more than one minute long. So when I was watching it, I was like, it's still going. <laughs> In a good way, like I liked all of it, but I was like, I can't believe this is still going. It hasn't ended or started repeating eight times. I think um, someone had put like a cut together because they. It, it was like mm-hmm. Smack the Pony was like the all-star like of women's british comedy sketch show so there's Mm -hmm. like uh sally phillips is in it fiona allen's in it uh i mean like it's like okay this is the royal family of british comedy and so i think someone had just put the super cut together uh dune mckitchen's in it um and so like it's it's like okay this is all star you know what i mean Mm -hmm. so okay all right, so you did like both of them. I so. loved both of them. And I okay. I was like, Mark has exquisite taste. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm so desperate to be liked. <laughs> I thought they were awesome. And I, okay. I liked it because you said that you thought I would find it funny. And I was like, oh, personalization. <laughs> yeah. How sweet. <laughs> well, I have missed the last the last couple of shows we've done. I missed the mark a couple of times, so I was really trying to concentrate back in and be like, okay, I've got to get it right again. So, okay, well, what again, I, I need to circle back to that first one. What I loved about it is that they had a man on staff who was willing to be like the concept is so funny. <laughs> The, the verbal abuse was funny, and the fact that they hired a man to be yeah. on staff to beat the shit out of people who weren't good at it, who was excited about his job. Yeah, there yeah. was so much about it that it just really worked for me. Okay, <laughs> cool, cool. All right, well, out in podcast land, you need to see that link. It's one of my personal favorite sketches ever, that. All righty, well, I think that is our show. Oh, Ten minutes late. But it was 10 minutes very well spent in the uh, exhilarating company of Christian Borky. Yay. Um, do you have anything to say goodbye? Do you have any uh, thing you want to say goodbye? Oh, um, I, I don't know. Uh, drink. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, we'll all that's, drink that's all after the podcast. You can cut that out. You can cut out half the shit right. I said. <laughs> Go no, for it. We, know. we never edit. Never edit. All right. Well, I'm going to end the podcast now. I'm going to forget my outro as per usual and hope that producer Christine uh, can put in a, a pre canned thing. Um, you need to go to uh, you think that's funny podcast.com to see more of the links we were discussing. Um, and cue the jangly guitar music and goodbye, Christian. Bye. Bye.